honestly be endless ocean when the world lay in a dream there was rhythm in the splash and roll but not a voice to sing so the moon fell on the breakers and the morning warmed the waves till a single sail did jump and hum for joy as though to this is my home, this is my only home, this is the only sacred ground I have ever known, and should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of thee. Then the day shone bright and brighter till the one turned into two and the two into ten thousand things and old things into new. And on some virgin beachhead one lonesome critter crawled and he looked about and shouted out in his most astonished drawl. This is my home, this is my only home, this is the only sacred ground I have ever known. And should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden. Then all the sky was buzzing, and the ground was carpet free. And the weary children of the woods went dancing in between. And the people sang rejoicing when the fields were glad with grain. This song of celebration from their cities on the plain. This is my home, this is my only home, this is the only sacred ground that I have ever known. And should I stray in the dark night alone, wrap me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden. Now there's smoke across the harbor, and there's factories on the shore, and the world is ill with greed and will, and enterprise of war. But I will lay my burdens in the cradle of your grace, and the shining beaches of your love, and the sea of your embrace. This is my home, this is my only home, this is the only sacred ground I have ever known, and should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden. Oh, in the gentle arms of Eden. So today our subject is Earth Day. Earth Day is coming up this Wednesday. It's actually always the 22nd of the month. And um, it's an interesting thing for me to talk about Earth Day. I'll let you know that I'm sure that you're all having different levels of uh, different levels of emotions. We seem to be kind of doing the roller coaster of emotions around here. Most days things are pretty stable. Some days things are not as stable. Some days things really get under my skin. How about you? Is that happening for you as well? Some days things really get under my skin. And Earth Day was launched in 1970, 50 years ago. And it was launched specifically 
with the intention of addressing our environmental concerns, climate change and things like that. It's hard for me to even believe we've been talking about climate for 50 years because it's such a, a prevalent subject now, but it's been 50 years that we've been having that conversation. And so as I, 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 I like very much for us to be relevant. I want us to be talking about what the world is talking about. I want us to be aware that every bit of, of our life as human beings on the planet is part of our spiritual walk. That our spiritual walk is not something that we do outside of life. It's actually part of life. So if you're new here, you'll find that we talk about what's going on in the world a lot. Um, as, we, as we talked, uh, as we talk, we do that from an apolitical position. Because no matter how much we think, we've gathered with people who think just like we do. I promise you, we have gathered with people who think in lots of different ways. And that really is what we cultivate here. That's really who I, I'm hoping you're proud to be part of. That we can find a way to honor each other in all the different ways that we think. All of that said, when I got to sitting down and working on this particular lesson, I realized that the emotional piece of talking about the environment and climate change was too much emotion in my life right now. I realized that I could not go into any more controversy or uncertainty than where I am already today. And that's challenging for me because I think there are a lot of important things that need to be said about where we are with our environment. So as we go through the next few days, I want to invite you to pay attention to our Facebook page because I will be posting some things about the earth and how we're caring for the earth and where we are in our earth care. I'll be posting some things about that that you can take a look at and use as kind of fodder for your own inner fire about where you want to be and how you feel about our earth stewardship. And I want to talk about the earth today. I just want to talk about it from a spiritual point of view. And I want to give you a possibility. I want to start um, with the work of James Lovecraft in in the late 60s and early 70s, James Lovecraft uh, delivered to the scientific world something called the Gaia Hypothesis. And the Gaia Hypothesis is just this. The Gaia Hypothesis is named after a Greek goddess named Gaia, who is supposed to represent the Earth. And the reason that that name was used was because the hypothesis is that the, the Earth is a living organism, that it's not just a chunk of rock floating around in space, but that it has its own intelligence and its own living, moving spirit. Which for me, when it comes to our connection with, with the divine, that makes perfect sense. That we would be living beings part of a living, system that is part of a bigger living organism that is part of a bigger living universe galaxy first then universe i read this morning that uh, there are known to science over 150 mil billion galaxies known to science marked by science very interesting to think but I'm suddenly feeling very small. How are you? <laughs> we are very small in the big picture. And that science is now finding that not only are there all of these galaxies, but there are many universes that in fact we are a multiverse rather than a universe. That there are many, many universes out beyond what we can even imagine because it's so much bigger than us. Now I'm really feeling small. And I guess maybe that's part of the point this morning. 
Part of the point is when we look out beyond ourselves, when we look for God beyond ourselves, when we look out into the skies, whether it's day or night, we feel like what we do doesn't have much impact. And yet what we do has huge impact. So I wanna reverse your view. And I want you to start out there. Imagine that you are out in the multiverse looking for the perfect place to manifest something and that your attention comes from multiverse to universe and from universe through all of the galaxies to the perfect galaxy. And through that galaxy and all of its billions of stars, all of the planets to one solar system. And that in that solar system, one small blue dot captures your attention and allow your focus to come down to that. And as you come closer and closer, allow yourself to see the oceans and allow yourself to see the land and allow yourself to see the cities and allow yourself to see the life and finally allow yourself to come down to this simple home where you are right now. This place where the perfect manifestation of the holy is happening right in your living room or bedroom or kitchen table or computer office wherever you are imagine that you are the perfect manifestation you are a powerful being an incredibly powerful being and before you can understand the earth as a living source you have to understand yourself as the perfect expression of the holy. If you are the perfect expression of the holy, then everything around you can be the perfect expression of the holy. Everything that you see. Because where did this all come from? All of it. The computer in front of you, the desk or flat surface that you're looking at, the sweet fuzzy animals that so many of you hold as your partners, the people that you see on the screen, where did all of this come from? Where did the intelligence and the wisdom to create the world we share come from? All of this that we see is the living expression of the divine. It's the thing we use to remember where we came from and what we are. So if we allow our consciousness to understand the earth as a living being, then we can follow naturally that it has systems for breathing. It has systems for circulating. It has natural intelligence. It has the ability to respond and interact with us in powerful ways. Now, most of you here have been around with me for a long time. I have been here 10 years now. And most of you have been around. But some of you are just getting to know me. And you should know that I am the queen of woo-woo. <laughs> you should know that I have spent much of my life interacting with nature. I would tell you that I, I wrote a story that was told to me by a river. All I did was write it down. But it was told to me laying on a rock in the sunshine next to a river. I'll share that with you sometime. And I will tell you that some of the wisest teachers I have ever experienced have been trees. And that I spent about a decade of my life, an older decade between my 40s and my 50s, climbing up in as many as I could get up in and sitting with them and listening. And some of the most important lessons that I have learned in my life have come from those trees. Some of the best teachers I've ever had. I will tell you that I have sat with my sweetheart with our backs to stones in Garden of the Gods and received brilliant downloads about life and about relationship and about longevity 
and how to be still and notice what's happening around you. And I share all of that with you boldly because unless we talk to someone who's had that experience, a lot of times we don't think it's possible because we don't think of life. We don't think of the earth as a living being. But what fascinates me about the earth is that it holds the wisdom of all time. It holds not only the wisdom of our ancestors, but it holds the actual physical beingness of our ancestors all the way back through time. All of that wisdom remains with us. We have the ability to access all of that wisdom. And I, I doubt there's anybody who's here this morning who hasn't at some time been out in nature and experienced a sense of peace, a sense of a different kind of peace than what we might experience in our homes. A peace that feels like connectedness, like being breathing the same air, breathing out for the trees and having the trees breathe back for us. There's something that changes when we make time to be with nature and to recognize nature as a living being and recognize all the different facets as living. So one of the great challenges for me living in a forested land is to see every tree as an individual existing life form. Because gosh, don't they all look alike? But what if every one is different? And we know they are, don't we? What if everyone is a different being and a different life form? What if every iris that's about to spring in your garden, every daffodil that will come up every year, every little buzzy bee, every little everything around you is a unique and original life form, not quite like any other. How would it change your experience of life? First of all, if you're feeling isolated, I suggest you go out and talk with nature because we all have it around us. What if every little life form is important? Because do you really believe in a God who didn't create every blade of grass? I don't care what you call that God, whether you call that God unified field or you call that God goddess or you call that God Krishna, I don't care what you call it. But there is a bottom from which everything emerges. There is a place that all of this comes from. and Everything around us is part of it. And when we talk about something like Earth Day, we have to understand that we will do Earth different. We will live on the planet different when we recognize that every single thing we see and are surrounded with is the living expression of God. That every single experience. So my sweet husband will walk over every single ant he can. Is that an extreme? If you were the eyes of God, would that be an extreme? Or would it be to value life in its smallest form? Is it always practical? Maybe not. Maybe we can't do that in all that we do, but we can do it a lot more than we do. If we want the earth to change, if we want, if we want the mind of people on the earth to change, we're not going to do it by complaining. We're going to do it by returning to valuing what we have been blessed with the companions that bless us, the flowers, the trees, the running waters, all the different life forms that bring wisdom, all of that is there for us. Years ago, Mark and I listened to a gentleman speak. His name is Richard Louvre, and he wrote a book called Last Child in the Woods. And his, his basic presentation was, 
if we don't get our children out into nature, they will not value nature. Because when we grew up, our parents sent us out to play. And we would stay out until the lights came on. We were out. We were not afraid. We were exploring and we were laying in the grass and we were cloud watching and making pictures in the clouds. And we were doing all those things that we did that kids don't do much of today. And Mr. Lou's presentation was around that. He was saying you can't expect for those children to grow up and find nature in their briefcase. We find nature in our memory of interacting with it. And he, he was asked, so there are different positions on nature. Are we stewards of nature? Or are we, do we have dominion over nature? And he said, neither of those is true. We are nature. Just like every other living thing we encounter, we are nature one single facet, each one unique and each one precious and each one here to do something particularly important. So we come back to an understanding of the value of the earth and to living differently by remembering that it's an expression of God. That that God by whatever name you choose, that thing that you revere, that place where you find your connection to something that is beyond your explanation. If you spend any time at all immersing yourself in nature, you will find something you cannot explain, something beyond your wildest imagination, some beautiful creature that operates in a way that makes no scientific sense at all. You'll marvel at the colors and you'll marvel at the textures and you'll mar marvel at the beauty and you'll find yourself wondering how it is that you appear to them in the same way that they appear to you. So I want to invite you to close your eyes. to think for a moment about a favorite place in nature. It may be a place you grew up with. It may be a garden you're cultivating. It may be a place from your, from your history or a place where your ancestors lived or a place that you desire to go. Whatever that place is, in your mind's eye, Allow yourself to be there. Allow yourself to notice the colors around you. Just take note of them. Look around and notice the variety of expressions of the holy that are in that place, more probably than you can count. Allow yourself in your mind's eye to reach forward and to touch something. And notice whether it's cool or whether it's warm. Notice whether it's smooth or it's rough. Notice that it's alive. Whether it's stone or branch or leaf or buzzy bee. Notice that there is an aliveness. Did you know that stone has its own vibrational quality? All of it is alive. Every single bit of it alive with the energy of the holy. Let yourself take a couple of deep breaths in this space. See if you have a remembered fragrance or perhaps you're imagining into that fragrance. 
Let your lungs be filled with the peacefulness of this place. And notice how your shoulders rest a little lower on your neck. This is a sacred and holy place that exists within you. You can go to this place in any moment, anywhere you are at any time. You need only close your eyes and go there. And when you do, it will change how you feel. Go there and remember that you are one with God. That you are never alone. That there is more life around you than you can even take in through your breath or your eyes or your knowingness. Rest here for just a moment. Take a deep breath in and relax. Gently open your eyes, but allow your presence to stay where it is as you listen to this music.
Thank you, Connie. Everybody take a deep breath in and release. So you have homework this week. And sometimes when I say you have homework, people go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I don't want any homework. But this is good homework. Your homework is to spend a little time outside every day. A little time noticing life around you. You can pick the place. Pick a place where you're six feet away from anybody you don't need to be around. But give yourself some time to notice the holy around you. This is such a, an important thing to where we are right now. It's difficult. And I want to acknowledge that for you. I want to acknowledge that we are we are going through something we haven't been through before, and we're finding our way. And I also want to acknowledge that there are tools at our fingertips, tools that will help us to come back to who we really are, place to ground our feet, sometimes putting your hands in a, in a source of water can make a big difference. There was a time years ago that a message that I got from nature was to ground in water. And I have always thought of grounding as taking my shoes and socks off and putting my feet on the earth and grounding in the earth. But I was taught to learn how to ground. I was told to learn how to ground in water. And so I had to go stand in Manitou in the creek, in the creek that runs by the park there to get a feel for what grounding in water would mean. And I got to tell you, first of all, that is some cold water. <laughs> you can't stand there for very long. But when you ground in water, you have to soften your knees and you have to allow yourself to move just slightly with the water in order to stay solidly planted. You have to be able to move just slightly with the flow of the water. 
And I think that's valuable to us right now. I think we have to soften our knees, that we can't steel ourselves against this time, but instead we soften into it and we trust that the flow of the holy is going to take us where we need to be. So I invite you to soften and maybe it's water for you or maybe it's softening into the breeze and seeing how nature moves with the wind. Whatever it is, watching the blades of grass move, watching the leaves move, watching those spindly little twigs from last year that only have just the faintest hint of green on them now. Whatever it is, there is a place from nature for us to learn how to do what we're doing right now. How to move gently with it. How to allow ourselves to move in this present moment, not fearful of the next moment. So I invite you this week to take up this homework assignment, to spend a little time learning from nature, to ask intentionally, show me what I need to know right now. Show me what it is I need to know and to allow the divine to come through in that way, to comfort you and, and bring you wisdom, that kind of wisdom that comes in pictures and experiences that isn't about thinking. It isn't about thinking harder. It's about being one with the holy. So I invite you to take that into your week. I invite you to sing the closing song along with me. And I'm actually gonna go off the mic altogether. Uh, I have to sing a bit louder to make that happen. But I, I would like you to tell me in the chat if it's actually helping. Let the light within you shine. We are all connected. Look into another's eyes. See your light reflected. We are one light shining so Have a blessed week, everybody.